Welcome to another Nature Discovery screencast. Look over my shoulder and watch as I look for the pure beauty found in nature from the raw videos taken on one of my photo walks. The date of this photo walk was March 29, 2017, and it took place in several locations around Cabarrus County, North Carolina, and that is in the United States. Today we're using Final Cut Pro X on a Mac. We will be reviewing the raw videos as part of our video production workflow. You can also watch our 30 Seconds of Nature screencast where we take selected raw footage and turn it into 30 second or longer videos to be used in the Nature's Wild Things website where we are building a visual nature field guide to life. All right, let's look at what we have today. Again, we're, we're uh, doing that photo walk where we start off with our Eastern Tent Caterpillar uh, in the larva stage here. Uh, it's the Eastern Tent Caterpillar Moth is what we're looking at in the larva stage. And uh, what I'm interested in observing is the fact that over time, these caterpillars are getting bigger and bigger and they're building onto their nest and you can almost see the horizontal uh, layers starting to form where it, it appears that they build a layer of webs over top of the uh, previous layer leaving many layers to their nest so they can crawl inside and crawl inside and crawl inside. I haven't figured out the access point to each layer or how they're doing that yet, but I just uh, find it interesting that every day when I show up, uh, some of these caterpillars are deeper and deeper and deeper into their nest here. Just uh, kind of fascinating the way it that it works. Uh, you can see some crawling around on the outside. You can see some crawling around on the inside. Just uh, fascinating the way it works. Here you can uh, see I pulled back a little bit and you can see them crawling around. I'm, I'm thinking maybe their access point is up there near the top of that branch somewhere but uh, Every day it seems like this is getting a little bit bigger. What I'm not sure of is as these caterpillars are crawling around, if the purpose of that crawling around isn't that they're leaving behind one thread like a, a uh, spider does and building upon their, their nest. I wonder if that's what's really transpiring here. Uh, interesting. Okay, down the trail a little bit, we came across the Carolina sitar, and uh, these beautiful little butterflies are from the brush-footed butterflies family. Um, this little guy was uh, doing a little surfing on a leaf here. He just getting my camera set up, but he's kind of like a teeter-totter leaf there where He's kind of going back and forth. There he goes. Hear the wind blowing a little bit in the microphone. Uh, and he just going back and forth and back and forth. <laughs> Eventually takes off here. I like the way that they uh, they look around a little bit here uh, just before he's taking off. Uh, they're uh, pretty still, but uh, you can see his head <laughs> goes to the left and then uh, head to the right a little bit, looking around, looking around, see something he wants to uh, accomplish here, and off he goes. I don't know how much of the upper wing you can see here. They're mostly 
all just gray. So there's nice uh, spotted uh, wing underneath with a nice little pattern on it, but the, the tops of the wings are mostly just gray. All right, now the next one is this this sort of caught me by surprise here. Um, they're woolly Adler aphids. And I've seen the woolly aphids around before and never really, being so small, I never really got good photos of them or videos of them. But uh, these guys are pretty big and uh, they caught my attention because over this stream bed that uh, I was walking along uh, the white stood out and I thought it was some sort of fungus so I took a picture of it the first day and uh, the uh, when I got back and looked at the pictures I thought well this is no fungus these are these uh, woolly aphids and uh, I come to discover that uh, there are many varieties of the aphids and they're basically called by the tree they hang out on. And I believe this in this case is the woolly adler aphid and uh, beautiful long strands uh, on their fur, I guess you'd call it. Here on, the, on this video clip, I think we can almost perceive them moving around a little bit. Now these guys have like a almost like a straw mouth part, a sharp little straw, and they inject it into the the bark of a, a tree or a plant and uh, they're really after the liquid that's under the surface there. And as the uh, aphids attach themselves and uh, probe down into the surface of the plant um, basically they're sucking up the sap and they say that sometimes this sap is basically under pressure and uh, what happens is that uh, the pressure causes honeydew to come out the other end <laughs> so these ants come along and they tend to and protect the aphids and they sop up this honeydew. So it's almost like shepherds and their sheep in this case. And you can see the ants here kind of uh, doing just that. I found this fascinating when I discovered this and uh, Sometimes it's the uh, little things are are the most uh, fascinating sometimes. And uh, you can see that uh, in this video here, I just have uh, a little more of a close-up of these ants tending to these woolly aphids. And see some more. That's the kind of thing that fascinates me. All right, now we're going to move off to a butterfly next here. And this is an American lady butterfly. Its top of the wings look a little bit similar to a pearl crescent butterfly. And I believe what we see here is the under wing view of the American lady and this butterfly is a lady. This is a female butterfly and I, after watching the video once or twice I uh, figured out what uh, we're actually looking at here. We're looking at this butterfly and I'll take it slow, a little more slow motion here. This butterfly is depositing eggs upon the leaf of this plant. So this butterfly has just mated and is now depositing eggs on this plant here. This is not the best view in the world of what's going on here. 
but she's got her tail right down to the plant leaf there and uh, that's what she's doing is uh, she's putting eggs down steps down on the uh, little branch there turns a little bit sideways so we can see her better and uh, I think uh, then just proceeds to uh, take off in a second let's skip skim ahead and look there yep and uh, unfortunately when she takes off we really can't we see the underside of the wing a little bit we really can't see the top side of the wing so let's let's go and look I'm gonna go to Lightroom here where I'm gonna look at some of the photographs that I uh, took last year of this beautiful American lady butterfly now this is the underwing this is the uh, butterfly sitting on a thistle bulb uh, about June I believe of last year just beautiful beautiful markings on this underwing of this butterfly and when you look at the top of the wings completely different you wouldn't think that it's the same butterfly uh, just completely different uh, look to the butterfly uh, different coloring and uh, that's the top of the wing here you can just see some of the the photos here of uh, this butterfly on this beautiful beautiful uh, thistle <laughs> I know a thistle can't be beautiful but uh, in some cases I believe they are and uh, light when you're you're taking uh, photos is so important um, uh, backlighting a bright backlit area or a dark shaded area allow you to do photos like this and just moving a few inches sometimes one way or the other puts your backdrop lighting into effect sometimes so uh, whenever I'm taking photos I'm trying to get the sharpest clearest uh, photo that I can but I'm also uh, keenly aware of what is in the background of of this uh, uh, beautiful little critter I'm trying to take a picture of and just just an example here too of uh, the photography involved in the and the process involved in the photography a little bit we're going to go into the develop mode here in Lightroom and just look at what we started with uh, for a photo so this photo here in this case as you can see was much much bigger and I cropped it down quite a bit and with a uh, uh, good uh, high pixel ability camera uh, you can do a lot of cropping without losing much resolution sometimes and I shoot everything in raw so we can adjust uh, the picture quite a bit to uh, bring out the, the the best look that we can with the photo uh, just a little bit on my my uh, photography uh, work there and uh, so much for the American lady let's see what's coming up next here I don't know the proper name of this grasshopper there are millions of kinds of little grasshoppers and it seems like every time I see one of these grasshoppers uh, they're different <laughs> they're, they're different looking I don't know if they really change in their different stages of life as they grow up and develop whether they really change a lot or I'm really looking at you know hundreds of different kinds of grasshoppers I suspect a little of both this little guy's missing an antenna somewhere along the way he uh, lost an antenna and I thought something might be wrong with his back left leg here too he doesn't seem to be using it as he's climbing but the further I go back and look uh, yeah he's he's using it and pushing off there so he's kind of got it tucked underneath him and is just using his forelegs to uh, move up there it's a beautiful little uh, grasshopper um, back to 
some of you may have remember from my previous uh, nature discovery screencast these beautiful little flowers here uh, that I found along the trail and again these metallic wood boring beetles were on the flowers so these uh, beetles must hang out whenever these flowers are around it was a couple weeks ago that I found these beetles on these flowers and they're dramatically changing the uh, petal pattern on these flowers. The flowers started out pretty uh, regular and uh, beautiful looking and now they're mostly eaten and gone. The one in the lower right hand corner yeah, lower right hand corner looks like the petals are gone completely and there's a I believe there's one of the beetles on that flower too but he's he's about finished the petals completely. So uh, that's the metallic wood boring beetle. Uh, there's the inner sanctum back there of those eastern tent moths. Okay, now uh, we're going to, you know, whenever you're walking around in nature, in the pastures, in the woods, in the hiking trail, you sometimes see the great big old bumblebees come flying by you, or they're hovering in a spot and they're watching for other uh, bumblebees. <laughs> And uh, they're interacting together. They're flying and toward each other and bumping into each other and doing all sorts of things. Well, this turns out to be, I believe, the eastern carpenter bee. And what really caught my attention this year with these bees is the fact that they've got so much green in their eyes. I just could not believe... Uh, uh, looking at them closely this year and these these bees I must admit uh, they're always flying around so they're hard to catch unless they land like this on a on a flower and by the way the the flower is the purple dead nettle flower and uh, they're predominant here in the early spring uh, early summer around here this is the flower that uh, if you're going to be pollinating you you find the flowers that are around and they, these are what's around this time of year but the beautiful green eyes on this bee just uh, amazing green in the eyes and a little bit of a white mouth parter in a white face you might say just never observed that with these bees before and doing a little research the bees with the the kind of yellowish white furry coat on like this uh, on these eastern uh, uh, carpenter bees are the males and the females are pretty much all black so this I believe is a male eastern carpenter bee and uh, he's going off of that flower but I think we have some more videos uh, just working the flower working the flower um, the flowers almost look like miniature little orchids that they have to kind of stick their face down into the flower to uh, get at the, the pollen and stuff and the nectar and uh, he's really got his face in the flower there but let's watch what he does when he when he uh, stops for a second here and cleans up a little he's got these little uh, short front legs he's using them to pull the flower into his face and uh, he's now proceeding to use those legs to uh, clean himself up but looking at the the uh, skipped away in the wrong spot there looking at the uh, the legs they're almost like brushes or there you can see it they're like brushes or combs so he's using what appears to be very soft brush to uh, brush his eyes with and to brush off the pollen off his antennas just never really observed this with these bees before but uh, so he's using the brush and then then he almost looks like he's uh, putting the brush in his mouth and cleaning off the, the pollen off of the brush <laughs> So just interesting observations with these beautiful little green-eyed 
eastern carpenter bees. The mouth part has a uh, what, what looks like a, a little straw on it, uh, but it's pretty short. Some of these bees get uh, pretty long and uh, just uh, amazing. I love the way they uh, at, at uh, just a moment's notice they can just start flapping their wings. They just kind of hold their legs limp and off they go to wherever they want to go next. If humans only had that ability to get from one place to another. There we can see them working that uh, the flowers there. Beautiful wing pattern. Let's skip down to this next one here. And just a beautiful pattern in his eyes there too. We have one more here popping out around. Let me see here. Here we go. A lot of uh, a lot of video has to be taking some taken sometimes to get the longest sharpest piece. Of video so much video gets thrown on the cutting room floor but uh, we we like to be able to see and observe uh, and uh, see what these beautiful little creatures look like you can uh, see his left front foot there um, has what looks like two fingers on it two little grabbers he reaches up and grabs that plant and kind of pinches it I guess to hang on and these these guys really hang on sometimes because these flowers are blown in the wind pretty heavy sometimes and they manage to hang on there just fine just all sorts of observations with these uh, beautiful little guys here um, there we have uh, just scoot ahead here a little bit moving those antennas around those antennas are always kind of probing the direction that they're going and there he's using his little brushes again to uh, clean up again All right, now we're going to go to a much smaller bee. Um, well, there, there's our uh, eastern carpenter bee again on a uh, much hated dandelion flower, although uh, they're sure not hated by the bees. <laughs> Little tiny bee flying around there, and I think we find that little tiny bee on this uh, yellow buttercup flower here. That's right, it's that time of year when the buttercups start pushing out. Usually one little buttercup at a time you, you see here and there and then before you know it in a couple weeks there'll be buttercups everywhere and some other unidentified plants. And uh, we go from one of the biggest bees to uh, one of the smallest little bees now. These guys are sometimes called a small carpenter bee and uh, Sertrina, I believe Sertrina bees, I'm not sure if I'm pronouncing that right, C-E-R-A-T-I-N-A -E bees and uh, I think there's a bunch of different varieties of these guys here too but they sure are small compared to uh, those big bees. And uh, these guys you often see hanging around, sometimes at the weirdest places, sometimes uh, on the side of your house, and uh, you really kind of, uh, what are these things? Beautiful black and orange coloring to them, though. And uh, they... Uh, are called the box elder bug. 
Um, so I'm assuming that means the box elder tree is somewhere nearby, although they do hang out on two or three different kinds of trees. But uh, they're a uh, uh, beautiful pattern to them. And there are many bugs similar with the black and orange, but different patterns on their back. And uh, they all have different uh, species names. But I believe this one is the, uh, with this pattern, is the box elder. Okay, well, thank you for uh, sticking with me today and helping me review these uh, interesting uh, creatures. Mm -hmm.